One thing I would want to know, um, this is would be maybe interesting. So Julie, um, as you know, Jess was on Big A Sketch Show um, with Kate McKinnon. Mm-hmm. And Kate obviously went on to do SNL. I remember um, I was already... I was pretty turned off to S. I was an SNL fan, obviously everyone is. And I, when she got cast, it wasn't anything against her. I was pretty turned off at that run. Um, there wasn't like a lot of people of color. There wasn't, mm-hmm. I mean, you can't shake a stick in LA and not hit like a hilarious black lady or black mm-hmm. guy, like period, end of story. And Lauren Michaels just couldn't seem to find one. And I was completely <laughs> just over. I hate Lauren Michaels guts. And then it was this whole thing with Kate and her being, you know, a lesbian. And then I remember that they had to scrub her interview from uh-huh. Autostraddle and that yep. had to have been with you. And that also was part of where I was like, oh, you're going to go and, and tout this is your big, you know, hire of how you're getting, you know, whatever to get away with not hiring anyone of color. And then you're going to make her scrub all of her anything lesbian that she's ever done. I was going to bring this up. To find, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know it all. Yeah. So that was with you. You did that interview. Yeah. Of yeah. I interviewed her. That was like so, that was like a solid year, I think, before she, she was in New York. We did a photo shoot in her apartment. She's like smoking cigarettes off her balcony. Like you. You yeah. did that same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With Robin. Yeah, exactly. That was right before I moved. Yeah. Yeah. And then they they made their, her take it down because what she's like talking about how she like wants to eat like a grilled cheese out of someone's vagina or something. <laughs> her management, her it was through her management. <laughs> well, yeah, no, SNL had had yeah ha- had her do that for sure. It was um, it, it no, made her know, lose all no, her social media. You know what it was? It was as she was auditioning. It wasn't. I don't know that it was specifically SNL. I was under the impression mm. that it was her management as they were, they, I think, thought perhaps that would cost her. Like she was suddenly up for these huge de- career make or break moments. And my in my memory was always that that was when I don't think she had because I remember reading online that she had been cast. And I think the interview was already offline by that Mm. point did you guys write together I always saw you as like comedy partners obviously you yeah you know why I think because I was obsessed with those you did you did a bunch of interviews I think at one of the Dinah Shores that's right so lesbian interviews and we are so still so fucking funny they're all still online yeah um the logo had her I just want to say just to answer that just that um that was a thing that logo set up. So it wasn't like Julie and just to be clear in terms of was she me or was, was Kate well, no, Brandy before Brandy. Well, I just want to say like, I, it did appear that way. Cause, uh, cause you guys front faced a lot together. Oh, but so just, mm-hmm. you know, that was a thing that was set up by logo and the producer at the time. And I believe Kate, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think they had a relationship. So, that person had Kate on and I we can't okay I at the time was a friend she was great and at the time a big gay sketch show too like we're doing anything we can do to get anywhere and so I would have done anything at that point and not that she she's deserved of whatever we were friends I liked working with her she was from the show um, and I would have, I would have worked with anyone. I would have worked with Trump. I would have worked with anyone. <laughs> I mean, and that's the truth. We were trying, that was for me, that was the first time I was a series regular on a TV show. I can't hide being gay. There's nothing I can do. I was in a situation where I'm trying to capitalize on any single thing that I can. So <clears throat> not that it was bad or whatever, but that was like set up for us, which was great. Um, but you know, like uh and I'm, I'm glad that you like them they they were fun to do and whatever but i we never did anything we didn't write together except for writing things which we all tried to do on the show so the writers and all of us as cast members would sit together we would try a little bit with this person or try a little bit with that person and everybody would whatever so um and i don't think we did anything except we did sappho's lips together uh which was a sketch on Big A Sketch. Yes. That was the only thing. And I can't remember who pitched that. Because I had come into Big A Sketch Show with Indigo Etheridge and music. 
and I wanted to do music on the show. And I think that translated into Sappho's Lips. So um, after that, you know. When Julie and I met, we met on a cruise with the cast of Big Gay Sketch Show. Um, and I was good friends with Nicole Payon, mm-hmm. um, who I hate now. And um, <laughs> Yeah, why do you hate her? Because basically what happened was um Julie, we went on that Julie's cruise. eyes widen. <laughs> we went on that cruise. Well, I know. Why. And um um I met Julie on that cruise and we hit it off and that one that made Nicole jealous just in a, like just in a friend way and um which was fine and but we stayed friends after that cruise and it was me and Nicole and then our other our gay guy friend Richard we all stayed in the room together like that's how close quarters it was and it was an um, it was a magical like moment in time and like changed my life forever um then big gay sketch i went on another cruise and i went again but i didn't go as nicole's guest nicole didn't even go and she was basically after that first cruise the 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 executive producer of big gay sketch show um asked me to be a part of this project with julie and kate and him like and but not and told me not to tell nicole and so then I was caught between like a rock and a hard place because of course I want, I was an actress. Like I want, I wasn't, um, you know, they were like hardcore comedy, which I was like, okay, I'm not like, I'm going to be, this is going to be so lame. But, um, and, but I would wanted to be a part of whatever project he was doing. I mean, so I didn't tell Nicole and then of course it got back to her. And then it was like, I was, you know, sucking dick through all her logo contacts. And she literally said I was blowing through her logo contacts. And I was like, well, the Rolodex is short and it's a wrap. So, okay. And it wasn't true. And that was not the reason that who would care? Who would care? Well, and also to, that's just disingenuous too. It's like, whatever she's, a, we all in the, in this business is horrific it's a disgusting, awful, backstabbing, grotesque, toxic, up at dawn, up at pride swallowing sea. <laughs> and we have all done things we're not proud of or not told someone about or did something because it didn't want to hurt someone's feelings. And they've done it, too. And we, we will do whatever we have to do because it is a disgusting, solitary moment in time. You have one chance to do it kind of business, even if that's true or not. That's what you believe, especially at a certain age and at a certain time. And you do what you have to do. And it's just like, but to say that you're, I mean, you know, yeah, she just, she, she crossed the line and, and the, you know, the friendship couldn't be repaired after that. So Julie, did but that, Mm. yeah, but that was how we started writing together Mm -hmm. because that was like a thing where we, he wanted us to write it and workshop it. And the thing is, as far as like, I have written, I had a, uh, not I've never had a writing partner or whatever, but I did work with a guy named Jason Blanche in New York pre Big Gay Sketch Show, who I wrote a lot of songs with, and he would write sketches, and we would be in them. There had a whole life before Big Gay Sketch Show and theater and all of this stuff. The problem that I always had with any collaboration is that people, you there's it's just you there's no equality, and then so when we started working together it was the first time that i felt that i met uh, somebody who creatively um wasn't trying to in fact wasn't trying to blow through the logo contacts in fact wasn't trying to get something from someone else through me or something such as and i was having a creative explosion it was like this is fucking amazing this is what i want i do stand up generally And it's so solitary and lonely and whatever. And now here's this person who's smarter than me and hilarious and challenging. And this is incredible. And this is everything I've ever been looking for. And then we just wrote a million things that no one cared about and no one liked. I remember (laughs) when I I remember, I think it was maybe when I was going to my first Dinah, our, our collective, I guess, first Dinah Shore, unless you had done one prior, Julie, I don't know. Had you? I can't remember. I'm yeah, not sure. Had, had I? Had I done one before? I remember I was in LA for a day hanging out with the Autostraddle girls before we like drove to Palm Springs. And I remember the hot goss was that I think the two of you were going to be 
writing something with Melissa Etheridge and Tammy Lynn Michaels. Yes. That was a good time. Yeah. We had already written it and and Tammy Lynn had agreed to she read it and agreed to to sign on as like we could put her on the website and say she would be this character. Was this and, was it a movie or a pop? Yeah, it was a feature length film, yeah. And she's so funny like I mean popular was like one of my favorite shows totally i loved her on that and we were psyched we went to melissa etheridge's house um it all went real left um (laughs) because 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 basically tammy lynn went left oh but um but yeah Yeah. that was our first thing we wrote yeah yeah and now you know it's like i don't know if it's they're calling it the like the dumb the the dumb gay romantic comedy oh right it's already so weird um it's like a royal and now it's a thing of like, oh, you know, a romantic comedy, a gay romantic comedy. That's like a studio film. But we were a hundred thousand million million percent the first people to ever write that script. We wrote it first. We wrote it in 2010 yeah. it's called The Nicest Thing. And it was I was just st- going to say this whole time I'm thinking in the back of my head. I don't know like what a, if like you're like, don't bring that up the whole time. I knew it was called The Nicest Thing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's a Kate Nash I was, song. I was like, just like holding back because I didn't want to veer this off the road. <laughs> I keep oh, going. that's so nice, Jess. Yeah. I'm glad you remember it. You know, it. it we're proud of it, yeah. and yeah. But it, and now they're doing it, and of course they're doing it with gay guys, which like I guess we should have known that. If looking back, Wait, is, this th- is this something that has already been filmed? No, no, no. no. Could never get it. But, never, never. But get like. It. Basically, bros is. I mean, Billy Eichner has done pretty much everything we. Yes, <laughs> literally, because we wrote another a TV script called Pushing It, which was basically exactly like Difficult People, but yep. we hadn't seen Difficult People yet. Yep. But looking back, we would just probably take our characters and make them men, and then we maybe yes could have gone farther. I think that's the key. If you make all your characters men, then you can get your things made. You know what's so? Or sad. can I tell you something? <laughs> oh, how do I? You know, I'm just going to fucking say it. <laughs> Betches. Okay. Do you know the comedian Emma Willman? Yeah. yeah. Le- lesbian comedian. And she's lovely, like very nice. We have some mutual friends. But she just started a new, pod- a new podcast for Betches. And it's called Ask Men Anything. And all the guests are men. And she just interviews men, straight men, about what it's like to be a gross man. She'll and be a millionaire. I- <laughs> She'll be a millionaire. She'll be a billionaire. She'll be a billionaire. She'll be a bajillionaire. I right. sent I sent She'll it be to the next. I sent it to my mm-hmm. self-described angry lesbian friend and she <laughs> hit the fucking roof. Oh, and Julie's being remarkably <laughs> calm. I mean, it's a genius idea. Good for her. Um, but yeah, obviously it's 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 infuriating. It's um, it's completely fucking infuriating. And of course, it's even more titillating that a lesbian is asking men. So it's even more infuriating. And um, ugh, I just every single thing with, or going back to even nicest thing 10 years ago. And I know that it would be the same thing today. And if we had men do it, if I can get made, whatever. But at the same time, years it's ago. like they wanted more sex or there wasn't enough sex. You should put sex in it. Why aren't they having sex? Sex, 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 sex. Anything with them. It's like, does Tom Hanks fuck Meg Ryan in a movie? No. And if he does, it's behind a door and no one ever sees it because that's not funny. And it's just like. This it's just anything with women and particularly lesbians. And I think that's part of the thing too with lesbians. It's just like, can't take it. Can't take it. It's just like, it's like, unless you're fucking or sexual, it's just, you can't, there's no room for us. It, it just in, in particularly in comedy, unless you're even still, if there isn't just a regular um, best friend Who's funny? Who's dykey? Yeah, that was Rosie O'Donnell, and that that ship has sailed. Ship has sailed. Julie, I wanted to ask you. So, <laughs> <laughs> where are mm. all the but? What happened to the butch lesbian? Mm, dead, dead. They're all dead. I mean, I don't. I don't. That's the other thing too. It's like it's sad. They're around <sighs> in life sporadically, but the, in, in in the media anyway the part has been recast and the part has been no but, but i know but i think in i'm talking about in real life those so you don't pe- see any butches around new york no 
those people now identify, they don't, they now identify as non-binary or they identify, or they're like legit, maybe going to transition or they're trans. Like I, and I feel like it's mm. a self, I've talked about this with my angry lesbian friend. We've discussed <laughs> how it, it is. I mean, is this like bad? I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know we're not even allowed to talk about. Don't it. Don't get us dragged into. I mean, we can't, I couldn't even tell you my feelings on it for my own self because I'm sure I'd get in trouble. So it's like, no, tell, I couldn't I'm, express I'm to curious. you. Let me say this, and each to their own, and everyone should live the the most happy life that they can. And I would 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 fight to the death for anyone to identify as what they want and do what they want. What I don't want is for you to identify for me. And that, for me, has been the issue. Don't tell me what I am. And don't create words to tell me who I am and what I identify as. And, like, that is a challenge. And that is a challenge. I now get asked when I transitioned. When did you transition? And it's like, okay, like, or what do you prefer as your pronoun or blah, 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 blah. And, and I understand that I look a certain way and whatever, but at the same time, it's like, ugh. I, I wanted to say, if I were a kid now, the, the kid that I was, you know, growing up, I would probably be pressured to transition. And I thought I wanted to be a boy. I wanted muscles. I wanted to be around boys. I would make a thing about being around boys. I thought, you know, da, 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 da. but I'm not. And... So it's it's confusing. And yeah, and I do. I don't know what that why I said that. But like, I do think there is something to be said for the butch les the butch les. There is something still such as just a butch les. You might just be a fucking dyke. You know what I mean? You might. And Maybe that's you're OK. Not. That's OK. Everything's OK. But I don't want to be it to, to be discounted as one of the things. Well, yeah, like, it seems now it's like the last thing. And also, I Rosie O'Donnell's character in in um, Sleepless in Seattle is like one of my favorite characters of like all time ever in TV. I was obsessed with her. I was obsessed with Paula Poundstone. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, these are these are archetypes that we don't want to lose. I feel sad that that people aren't getting that anyway in the media or in comedy or as much as they once were. I'm happy to see. Dot Jones diking around in an all state commercial <laughs> it makes me happy. Like, like, let's let's mm. keep it alive. 